Welcome back to another episode of Drain Waste Vent series by the Building Expert team. In the last episode, you watched us rough in the bathroom drainage. Today we are going to rough and trap arms for sinks and connect another vent coming from the kitchen to one of the sink vents. When you rough and trap arms, there are two important measurements to consider. First one is the center of the sink horizontally, so that at the finishing stage, when you install the sink, your sink drain aligns with the trap arm. And the second one is the drain height. This is very crucial, because if you plumb it too high, there is no way you can get it fixed without having to cut the drywall. And if it's too low, you will end up cutting the base of the cabinet. We are also installing line cleanouts for our sink drains. It is important to position these correctly, so they fit vertically and horizontally within the cabinets. We also made sure that they don't end up on any seams where two cabinet boxes join, to avoid cutting cabinets to access them in the future. We have the cabinet design specifications, so we know exactly where to plumb the trap arms and line cleanouts. Generally where a standard cabinet is installed, we roughen our line cleanouts at 12 inches and trap arm tees at 18 inches, plus or minus half an inch from the finished floor, and we never had any issues. Initially, we plumbed our trap arms offset from sink drain centers. We then ran our trap arm through wall studs to align them with sink drains because we are going to install wall hang faucets and this approach will prevent vent pipes from clashing with our faucets and light fixtures. There are many small details to consider when plumbing sink arms. Sink arms and cleanouts are the only two components of the drainage system that are going to be visible once the house is complete. So make sure they are perfect. Another thing you must consider when roughing in a trap arm is the slope. The correct slope for an inch and half pipe is quarter inch per foot. There is no allowable tolerance when it comes to trap arm slope. Because if the slope is less than that, water and waste may not flow properly through the pipe. If you have more than quarter inch per foot slope, it can create a strap and suck out the water from your trap and allow sewer smells to escape. Your nicely done drainage work will go to waste if you mess up your trap arm slope. Trap arms also have minimum and maximum lengths. Maximum you can run an inch and half trap arm is 5 feet 11 inches. And the minimum is 3 inches. The maximum angle for a trap arm is 135 degrees. So plumb your trap arms in a way that your pipe from your trap arm T to the P-trap 90 reaches while staying within these limits. You might be wondering why we use line cleanouts when we could simply remove the P-trap from the trap arm and run a snake from there. The reason is that our local codes do not allow tubular traps. We must install traps of the same material. We are using ABS pipes and fittings, so we must install ABS P traps. At the finishing stage, we will install a union P trap with a slip joint adapter on the sink tailpiece. But the P-Trap 90 will be permanently glued to the trap arm. So it gets hard to run snakes through the 90s. This is where the line cleanouts are useful. You can run a snake without having to remove the traps.
If you don't want to install a line cleanout, another option is to use a plastic socket coupling, so you can completely remove traps for snaking. We also had another vent coming from the kitchen sink, which we connected to one of the sink vents. Our outside wall has 2x6 framing, so we kept our pipes on the inside of the wall to allow for insulation behind them. All the markings on the pipes are facing forward for the inspector to verify the correct material is used. Finally, we capped off the ends of the trap arms, so when we conduct a water test on the entire DWV system in the house, water will only come out of the vents that are penetrated through the roof. That's all for today's video. In the next episode, we will connect both vents from the top of the trap arm tees and penetrate one vent through the roof. So make sure to watch the next episode. I will put links to all the materials we used in the video description. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.